I'm very excited to start today's spread. It's a 3D pop-up. I found this on another YouTuber's page and I can't wait to tell you about it. But first, let's talk about the journals for 2021. I decided to upgrade from the journal I had used in 2020. 2020 was my first year bullet journaling and when I went to uh, choose a journal, everything was sold out. So I just wanted something readily available. I didn't want to wait and I ordered a bullet journal from Amazon. Uh, to be honest, the, the journal served me well for the price point, um, but I definitely wanted to upgrade to something with a better quality paper and just a better quality journal in general. I watched a lot of review videos, um, but ended up uh, looking at a review video that was extremely helpful that helped me to choose this journal. I will link in the description box uh, to the video so you can check out that YouTuber's page. But ultimately, I decided to go with the Maisie and Co. Uh, dot grid journal. It's in a vegan leather. It's 160 GSM semi-coated white paper and has 192 pages. Uh, they're customized, so um, they have my name. And I, my understanding is that they do this all by hand. They're really beautiful. And the lovely thing about vegan leather is, you know, you can wipe it down if you get it dirty while you're journaling, which I sometimes do. Inside it says this journal is loved by um, and then we we get started. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about how dark the dots are. Um, it's a very uh, traditional and comparable to other uh, other journals and I suggest you check out Maisie and Co. All right, let's get started with the um, bullet journaling. I ultimately decided to go with the beige tan to start the year and we'll save the blue one for later or maybe use it for um, other journaling purposes. Right now I haven't decided. All right, I like to start my uh, 2021 20, journal or any journal with a um, uh, basic calendar. I did do this last um, last year uh, and I definitely wanted to do it this year. I just wanted to be able to have like a place where I could go for a quick glance uh, and I decided that it was the best first page for me. These pages take um, an extremely long time to do um, and they're fairly easy to, to do but Again, it takes a while to get all the numbers in. Uh, I decided to uh, go with a theme of mermaids for 2021. I made the decision to do this theme um, before I was really clued into um, the fact that it was possibly the dawn of the age of Aquarius. Um, so maybe it's fortuitous that I, um, I chose this particular theme. I had thought about the theme because this past year I was really uh, drawn to learning more about um, African and African American folklore after seeing um, a great short on Black Mermaids and I thought, hmm, I'd love to know more about this. Uh, the filmmaker had said that, you know, there is folklore within African heritage um, about mermaids and I didn't know that. So I took some time to, you know, dig around a little bit um, and I thought it was uh, pretty cool. And then later on, um, they announced that there was going to be a black little mermaid and I was like, wow, it's like sort of the age of mermaids. And I uh, wrote it down as a possible bullet journal theme. Um, but then ultimately, um, sat on it for a little while and then when I found this 3D pop-up idea I thought this is perfect but I'm going to save it for the beginning of 2021. So I have known for quite a while that this was the spread theme that I was going to have to launch my 2021 bullet journal 
What I didn't know, however, was that I was going to be um, putting it up on YouTube. Um, all of this sort of happened very quickly, um, but I'm very excited about it. So hopefully um, you are as excited about my spreads um, and we can take this journey together. I just keep kind of thinking about, oh my God, I can't believe um, I'm putting myself out there like that. I know that there are tons of other bullet journal YouTubers. I watch quite a bit of it. It's a little corner of the world that I find both uh, therapeutic and um, inspiring. So um, I figured why not throw my hat into the fray. I decided to um, color code my weeks on this calendar, um, both as just for it to you know go with the theme, but also just so I can see first weeks on the calendar pretty easily. Just easy site guide. I use it throughout the journal, these colors um, in the 2021 opening setup. All right, so I pre-cut this. Um, I decided I wanted to, I didn't want to do a full blackout journal, but I had been sort of um, experimenting and interested in working with some black pages. These are not the Archer and Olive um, pads. This is just some black paper that I had picked up at my local craft store. I picked up a whole pack packet of it and I've just been kind of painting with it and experimenting with um, my watercolors to um, to see what it looks like on there. Uh, these are the um, Fine Tech uh, pearlescent or metallic watercolors that I'm using. Um, this is for my key. I um, cut out the page, rounded the corners and um, got this already. I'm sort of uh, off the cuff here freehanding the, uh, the coral underneath, but uh, everything else I sort of uh, did a test to see how it was going to look. Um, I'm pretty pleased overall uh, with I guess this sort of, um, I wanted to be sort of like a magical looking water. I don't know how close I came to that, but um, this is where we are. I kind of wanted to add more items to the um, to the painting, but then I kept thinking, don't overdo it, don't overdo it. Uh, plus I had so much to pull together in order to um, accomplish this spread. Um, they probably won't all look like this, all the spreads. Uh, this was extremely time consuming, but it is the launch of 2021. I know that most bullet journals, excuse me, most people who bullet journal, when they do their setups for 2021, they like to keep it really simple. But I really like to um, do something special that sort of reignites me and energizes me um, the whole year. At least I hope it will energize me <laughs> um, for the whole year. But I usually try to do something um, pretty special to come back to every month if I'm going to look at it every month of the year. I want it to be something that I um, hopefully enjoy looking at. But of course you don't know <laughs> until you actually do it. So we'll see how it goes. So I finished my key. Uh, this was the same as um, my key from last year. I'm just keeping it really simple. I thought I might change it up, but uh, ultimately I decided not to. Uh, that the the basic key worked for me and there was no need to change it. I'm working here on my future log. Um, you'll see a lot of spreads like this. This isn't um, particularly special, but I just uh, thought it works. And I believe if if it works, you know, why keep changing it? I guess if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, is the old adage. This spread for me though is a go-to all year long. Um, it's sort of hard working. I, you know, will eventually pencil in all the important um, dates, birthdays, anniversaries, um, holidays, um, specific days off for my job, all those things I know 
in advance um, before the year starts. Uh, and it's extremely helpful when I go back to do my monthly spreads. It makes things really quick. I have some stamps. Um, I've been experimenting with them. I get a little unnerved when um, they don't stamp perfectly. So um, I usually only use them in spreads where I know that um, a little bit more, I guess, handmade precision isn't required. So I think the, the handwritten works best for me. I kept the spread pretty simple. Um, I didn't go in and make the boxes. I just put some lines there um, just to keep it simple. I found that with this particular spread, the simpler, the better for me personally. I eventually went back and added some um, some washi tape to these edges. Um, I know a lot of bullet journalers um, do this so that they can um, get back to this page fairly easily. And I thought I'll give that a try this year. Um, I mostly did it on one side because it's pretty easy to, to flip back and see that and get to where I need to go. Some more freehand um, designs here at the bottom. Sometimes the freehand is a little nerve-wracking on camera. Um, I like to pre-draw a lot of items, even when it's not on camera, just so that I can make sure I'm getting exactly what I want. But I just sort of decided randomly to add a little decoration at the bottom because I thought the page was looking a little plain for my taste. Um, I, I don't tend to embrace um, simplicity um, or minimalism in my bullet journal spreads. Um, I use the opportunity to um, draw and create something. Not that minimalism isn't creative, but typically I have like a lot of ideas and I just want to sort of get them out. Sometimes adding a touch of gold is exactly what's needed. So this is my goals page. I've already uh, set my goals for 2021. Um, I will go back once this video is over and take my time and sort of um, organize them and put them in the journal. I kept this page really simple um, because it was um, this idea of exploring um, African and African American folklore uh, that inspired this idea. Um, I tried to keep most of my sort of borders and prints um, in the African in an African style print. Um, I printed out a lot of different uh, cloths and uh, decorative details and tried to use those to make um, the borders and edges and details in the spread. You'll see more of it as we go along. This is my check it out page. Last year I didn't use this a lot because COVID hit and it just, you know, wasn't a lot to put in that page. Um, I decided to give it a go again um, since last year was my first year bullet journaling and I didn't really know if I was going to um, use the spread or if I didn't use the spread because of uh, what happened this past year. We're still in 2020 as I record this, so what happened this year, I should say. But um, this is the place where I put the things that I want to check out. I'm often sort of going to museums and checking out art exhibits and going to the theater, and uh, this is a good place to um, write things, especially those smaller shows that um, may be happening off-Broadway or off-off-Broadway. I try to see as much theater as I can. Um, I was blessed to get um, a printer for my bullet journal for Christmas from my sister. Shout out to my sister. Thank you very much for the amazing gift. Um, it prints three by three photos. Um, it's the Kodak. I can't remember what the specifics are, but I'll put it in the, um, the breakdown. 
I am, I trimmed these photos down because they wouldn't fit on the page, um, all three of them. And this is a spread that it's my year at a glance, but I'm doing it with, um, six pictures here and I'll probably be in a new journal. Um, so I'm thinking that probably what will end up happening is the other six will be there, but I'll add it in the middle. If not, it'll add some visual interest um, in the middle of my journal, something different or a link back to the beginning spreads. Um, this is this is really um, a, zen, a Zentangle technique that I'm using here. Um, I'm keeping it pretty simple, but again, I'm trying to uh, incorporate this idea of um, prints and textiles add a few details at the end to sort of hopefully make it a little bit more cohesive with some of the other things that I put in this section. I tend to work out of order um, with whatever is inspiring me at that time. I do a lot of sort of pre-prep. Um, if you saw when I flipped through, a page was complete that you haven't seen yet. Um, that's partially because um, I, I work well out of order um, sometimes it's because my hand is tired or sometimes uh, something goes quicker than something else. There we go, adding just a few little lines and details. It's funny, once you finish, sometimes it feels like that's all something needs. All right, so the index. This is um, something I did not use at all last year. Um, I thought the best thing to do is to put it in the back in typical fashion. It indexes at the back and I said, we'll see if I'll use it and this time it won't be in the way. So back to the blackout, we're getting to the, um, the opening page or the intro page for my 2020, um, 2021 um, bullet journal. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out um, how I wanted to um, basically visualize waves. I knew I didn't want it to be like a, a traditional thing and I was trying to find something that again linked back to um, this idea of different types of textiles and fabric. I was gonna go with something else um, but a friend of mine saw this and thought that um, she really liked this particular doodle um, and it's funny because this is this is like my go-to doodle. I'm, I've been basically doing this and making these shapes since I was a kid. Uh, I was still scared to, to do it in ink though on these black pages. Um, I was just like, I'm just gonna pencil it in first and then um, go back in and do it in ink. It was murder on my hands, but um, I think it was the best thing just so I could get all the things where I wanted them. These are um, jelly roll pins. This is from the, this pin in particular is from the, uh, the neon pack. Um, I love these colors. They look really great on um, black paper. I was going to say blackout journals, but um, this isn't a blackout journal. It's just black paper. I um, I was so tempted to do a full year of blackout journaling. I just didn't know if I would love it or not. So I decided to go with the paper. All right. I'm super excited about this. So I saw this on YouTuber Juni Sun Studio um, on her YouTube page, and I fell in love with it. If you aren't watching her videos, you should, you should, they're brilliant and amazing. Um, she saw this pop up or something similar to it in the Hermes pop up book and decided to um, create it, to recreate it. And if you are one of her Patreons, and I am, um, I was able to download um, this template for it. She goes into great detail in a video that I will link below on how she created this um, this template here. Um, but if you don't want to do all the work uh, that is listed in the video, you can um, simply become a Patreon, 
a patron at her Patreon, and um, you can download it. Uh, it's well worth it, and it's also great just to support other YouTubers. While I have it, um, I will not be posting a link to it or giving it out because that would be pretty crappy. So again, working here to um, create three layers. So this pop-up has three layers. I'll go into a little bit more detail about how um, it's pulled together. Um, this is the bottom layer. I wanted um, two of them to represent waves and sort of the idea of moving water uh, while also sticking to my, um, my original theme of patterns and folklore. Um, I'm hoping that, and I, I think I kind of accomplished this, I, I was so tempted to add in some more color, but I was like, let's stick with the colors that we have here um, to make it look like um, possibly an African textile. Finishing up this particular layer, this took a while. I did a bunch of different trials. Um, and ultimately I decided to do um, different patterns on each of the three layers of the pop-up. So you'll notice um, if you have been paying attention that this is this particular layer is very similar to um, the border that I did on um, my goals page. And also on the um, the page where I will go back and put in um, my year in photos. This probably, not probably, it definitely would have been um, a good place to try out those Archer and Olive acrylic graph pins. I um, have not jumped the um, the gun and purchased those yet. Mostly, I'm not sure what colors I want. Um, I use a variety of colors when I'm bullet journaling. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that I was getting something that I would actually use. But in terms of creating something that's really opaque and pigmented, I think the acrylographs would be great here. I'm using jelly roll pens, which are awesome but they can be uh, difficult when you're trying to layer other color on top of them. If you're wondering how my hands are doing, they, they're pretty tired, but um, I rather enjoy uh, doing my bullet journal spreads, so it was well worth it, or it's always well worth it in my opinion. Adding in the little details, some black to link it with the others. This idea of fabric again. So I feel like I can't do a bullet journal spread, uh, t an opening spread without uh, this idea of fishes. Um, so the center of it, which goes perfectly with mermaids, is um, a fish. I give a little nod back to my original um, chinoiserie inspired bullet journal setup for 2020. If you haven't seen my 2020 bullet journal flip through, um, you should check it out. It gives you an idea of the type of spreads that I, I tend to do. Um, I don't tend to stick with one particular style. Um, I guess they're, they do tend to be more is more. I'm going to challenge myself to do some simpler spreads. Um, I know that I can. I just tend to get started and never want to to stop um, creating, which is which is a good you know. I guess it's a good problem to have to continually want to create. So we got our fish going here, and next. We are going to start the process of, um, we're gonna get ready to cut this out. 
So this part right here, this is the link where you're going to glue all the three pieces to. Um, I recommend if you um, do this to really um, go through and give it a try before you actually do it. I did a sample um, before I started um, in my 2020 bullet journal at the back just to make sure that it worked and get all the kinks out. I realized as I was cutting this out that I had used um, a pen in that was green and not blue, so it didn't quite match the um, the setup uh, that I originally did on the black paper. So I had to go back and make some changes. I'm using my Exacto. We got to work out today in terms of all the cutting involved. Time to change the blade. The other thing is you're going to see how it sort of builds. Is you want to make sure that <laughs> when you go to glue these things in, ooh, caught in my throat there. Um, that you um, give everything time to dry. So I'm going back in here and adding a little bit of green to my original waves um, just so that um, we are matching and it all comes together. Sometimes mistakes happen and it's the best thing that happens. It creates something new and different that you really love. Um, you can, you're going to see I'm going to flow from this green and immediately think that it needs something else um, to it that these, these two colors are similar. And um, I started adding just a little bit of white. Um, and I think that it really bought this particular cover page alive. It's amazing how if you just sort of let it flow, let it go, let it flow, um, you can come up with something that um, you didn't expect to create, but that is beautiful nonetheless. All right, so before we're gonna start gluing, I am going to work on these mermaids. I drew three different mermaids. Um, because I wasn't sure, I'm always sort of planning these spreads, but ultimately may decide to do something different. I like some flexibility. So um, I drew three mermaids, you see two of them here. I ended up only using one. Um, they were, <laughs> um, the mermaids themselves were, were pretty um, easy for me to draw, but the faces, when you start getting into uh, the detail of faces, things kind of get, things can get a little bit wonky. <laughs> so right here, I'm going in and I have added some prints that resemble um, some African textiles that I printed out. I'm making the tail of the mermaid um, to look like this particular print. And then the end of the tail, uh, another print. There's lots of sort of layers and details. I'm gonna go in. Um, I started out with the um, the fine the the fine tech, um, but ultimately decided that I wanted a bolder color, and so I um, I switched to another watercolor set. Um, this the watercolor set that I switched to is the the Michaels store brand. Um, I have different watercolor sets, but um, I I can't say that I am ex like extremely impressed by the quality of these watercolors. But there's so many color options, um, and you don't have to spend a good time mixing. I had a rookie mistake, and my 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 battery died while I was painting that mermaid. So I just showed you the in process. All right, so now we are putting these pages in. I am using, um, I can't remember, as I look at it, I'm not, I can't remember the brand of the glue. I'll put that in the, I'll link that in the description. Um, you 
definitely need to use um, a strong adhesive and you most definitely want to wait for it to dry. So I'm testing this out. I don't want this to um, go over the page. So the way this works is there is um, two tabs, or the, technically there's three, but you connect the, the circles, one to each tab, and then the last one on the center. I experimented with a few different types of numbers, um, but ultimately I decided to simplify it um, and make it really easy. Sometimes you do something and then you realize that um, one of the numbers looks weird or wonky. I don't know why I didn't use the blade. I have been using it the whole time. I switched to the scissors, making it a little bit harder on myself. I stopped because I couldn't cut that center out. I was like, I'm going to have to get the blade anyway, but still went ahead and cut the rest of these out with, um, with scissors. The blade just makes quick work of these things. I didn't even get the mat out. This paper is so thick it didn't um, scratch my table. So in its placement, I wanted the letters, excuse me, the numbers to feel like they were floating. So um, I uh, moved them and placed them so that they were a little off kilter. All right, so you have to check this to make sure that nothing is stuck together. We got everything moving. Place our mermaid on there. And there we go. All right, final flip through. I almost never sign this opening page. I don't know why. It's our year at a glance, straightforward. Um, this grid page ended up being um, sort of cut out. Something happened with the camera. But this is a way to sort of mark your spreads um, so you can get them done easily. You can see our mermaid swimming with joy into 2021. Good times, good vibes. That's what we're hoping for. Uh, this is my year at a glance. This washi tape gave me the blues, the iridescent washi, washi tape. So that's why it's only on one side. Um, I ran out of it. I don't know if I'm going to get any more to add to the other side. I don't think it's necessary. Um, my little doodle, random doodle, ended up kind of looking like a dolphin. Um, I can't wait to fill this up with pictures. You'll see that, um, I guess, in the final flip through and the index. I think the index belongs in the back. Hopefully this time I'll use it. All right. And that's it. Ooh, a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs>